are going to get started. Um, uh, so welcome to our session on uh, facilitation coaching and uh, specifically for the Open Exchange for Social Change. Uh, I am Dirk Slater. Uh, I have uh, probably spent the last 20 years trying to figure out how to be a better facilitator. Uh, it's something that I am always learning um, and and during this session I want to share with you some of the things that I've learned, some of the tips in doing facilitation and how to run a good workshop session but also um, hopefully learn a couple of things from you all both today and also when we have the Open Exchange for Social Change next Tuesday. Um, I want to uh, actually invite Oscar Montiel uh, to come off mute and to just also give a few words of welcome. Oscar? Thanks, Dirk. Um, hello, everyone. This is Oscar and uh, from the community team at Open Knowledge International. Uh, just wanted to thank you all for being here on time. And just a small background, this is uh, a small um, workshop that we wanted to do previous to the IODC um, on conference now called uh, the Open Exchange for Social Change and we wanted to reach a bigger audience than the people that will be there uh, because we think these tools are useful for uh, our community in general because we all have some sort of event or uh, encounter with people so we wanted to start giving these tools and this Skillshare from um, from Dirk, who has a lot of a, a lot of experience on this. And uh, just thank you again for being here. And we hope this whole session will be useful for you. Thank you so much for that, Oscar. And also, just want to give out a shout out to Moore Rubenstein. Moore is here with us, but um, she is actually on holiday, so we are thankful for her presence as um, she's taken time out from precious time with her family uh, to to be. She has been an integral part of putting this session together. Um, so, just want to make sure that uh, you know that she's here and she is supporting all of us. So, thank you so much, Moore. Um, so what we are, uh, what you all actually need to know um, for this session, so one of the things that um, I, I've learned the hard way from facilitating lots of online sessions, um, we would love to be able to hear everyone's voices, uh, but sadly with all the different issues around connectivity, bandwidth, background noise, this often ends up being a rather painful experience. So I'm going to need to ask everyone uh, if you uh, wouldn't mind staying on mute, but uh, if you would use the chat room there to do your any communication we ask you to do. Um, uh, one thing, uh, we are going to be having a little time in the session later to address your questions and comments, um, so we hope that you will type anything that comes up into the chat room. Oscar is paying attention to them and he's going to make sure we address them before the end of the session. But to get us all started and to get your fingers warmed up, um, uh, please go ahead and uh, type hello in the chat room for us. And say hello. Thank you, Danny. Thanks, folks. Good to see you all and good to see you all nimble in there. One thing also to point out for you all is that this is being recorded um, and we're going to be sharing all of this information afterwards. We're going to uh, be typing up all of this useful information into, uh, uh, into the uh, forum um, so it will always be handy and you will always be able to uh, reference it. So what we're going to talk about today, we're going to start off a little bit and you guys are going to, your, your, oops, your fingers are going to get very, very nimble as we do a little sharing in the chat room with our experiences with learning. Um, we are also again going to talk about what the most effective way to learn something actually is. Then we'll look at what makes a good workshop session, sort of building on all of that. Um, we'll talk about some golden rules for facilitation and also 
give you some information about what you need to know for the Open Exchange for Social Change happening next Tuesday. We will answer any questions that you may have, and again, type those in the chat room, um, and then we will, we will wrap this all up. So, um, first thing I would love for you guys to do, just uh, think a little bit about a recent learning that you have done. When have you learned something? Um, and if you don't mind, typing into the chat room the answer to these two questions. So, uh, why did you learn it? What was the thing you, what, what, what was motivating you to want to learn something? Um, and then also, how did you do it? Take a, we'll, take, we'll take a pause and we'll let everyone think for a few minutes. But if you could think about a recent learning, a recent experience that you'd had learning, um, think about why you, uh, you wanted to learn something and then how did you do it. And this can be any sort of learning. Um, you know, if you, you learn something for your job, uh, learn something for work. That's great. And Adafi, just curious uh, if you can type in, like, why, why did you want to learn how to do that? All right. Any other? Any anyone else had learnings? Anything um, that you might have to do with work? Something you learned for for personal reasons? Um, ooh. I'm curious, though, uh, Nanny, on yours. Um, if 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 there was a purpose, did you have a purpose for the vlog itself? And what was that? And also, Mohammed, uh, learning about IOs. What was your reason for for learning uh, about um, international organizations and their impacts on politics? Great, Yag. Ah, oh, that's great. I love that man about using it for evidence of how my street looks like and how bad urban planning <laughs> is in your area. Um, and and that is, you know, if we want to do outreach other than just compiling stuff for make, fix my street. Great, Mohammed. Thank you so much for putting that in. All right, thank, thanks you guys so much for doing that little bit of, of sharing on, on how you've learned and why. Um, what I want to ask you now is, uh, looking at this list of stuff, um, first of all, actually my first question, even though this isn't what's at the top, my first question um, for you, thinking of yourself, what is what is your least effective method of learning? What do you think is is for you like the least 
uh, what works what work what works the least? What is the worst method that's up here um, for you in terms of um, learning something? Presentations, great, Adafi, and that's what I'm doing. What else? What is least? Yeah, university classrooms, lecture. <laughs> yeah, plus one to lectures. Lectures, lectures, good. We seem to have a, a um, yeah, uh, everyone seems to be in agreement that lecture is probably the worst way of learning something. And yet, that is uh, how most learning environments are set up. So for you guys, um, uh, what do you think is the most effective? What what works best for you? Um, for for um, <laughs> also like sorry, Martin, that's really good. Yeah, being yelled at for having been wrong. Um, which one is the mo most effective? What's your most effective method of of learning? And I, I take it, Adafi, that's what you're answering, peers. Yag, I I am with you. I hope I am pronouncing your name right. Teaching others uh, is is actually. Um, for me, a very effective way of learning. Yeah, learn by doing, practicality, direct personal experience. So yeah, I mean, uh, this, this, this is the thing that uh, is always very interesting to me in terms of um, how we are setting up uh, uh, our environments and spaces where supposedly learning and, and knowledge uh, is supposed to be shared. And as you have all noted, lectures and presentations are probably the worst way of, of doing learning, and yet that is how often most of the conferences, most of the spaces that we are going to um, are, are formatted. Um, uh, so, uh, but with all of this, what I think is really important, um, there has been uh, a lot of research done in um, how adults learn, and um, three key factors that I think everyone should keep in mind, particularly when we are trying to put together workshop sessions and trying to think about what is going to be meaningful experiences for folks. Um, this first thing, uh, you know, is, I think is really, really valid. Adult learning is problem-centered, right? So. Um, uh, rather than content oriented. So th the reason that you guys all were going out to doing uh, and doing some learning, right, in the, in the that first exercise was you were trying to to address some problems. You were trying to actually do something that would better inform you, help you do your job easier, help you get a message out there, help you prove something, but it is, what it is is that you had a problem and then you were trying to learn in order to maybe do something within that to, um, to solve the larger problem. Um, the other bit here, though, it, uh, in terms of how we learn, experience, and but really important is also error provides um, the basis for learning activity. So we go out, we try something, and often if we fail, that actually does provide basis for, for learning activities. So failure be becomes something really important and something that is an important for us to do reflection on and discuss. Um, but the main thing is most adults are interested in learning what has immediate relevance to their professional and social lives. So just wondering, does anybody have any disagreements with this particular set of key factors in, ad in adult learning? Anything up here that you would actually disagree with? That and Adafi, that's that's very true. We do also learn for fun, but in the that is still the like. How do we have fun, and how do we we get into it? But there, so there's a very direct reason and purpose for for why we are learning, and again, fun is fun. Um, and also, I I tend to have fun by 
breaking things and putting them back together again. But anyways, that's uh, yeah, probably too much about me. Anyways, um, so uh, uh, in in what Martin Knowles, who sorry, reference I just referenced there, but didn't actually talk about. Martin Knowles was a researcher who did a, a lot, hell of a lot of work in looking at how adult learns, and has done a lot of really good writing um, in terms of of uh, uh, you know, putting all this research together. He has come up with something called AIDIDS, um, which, uh, so I have spent probably, you know, I probably spent 15 years putting together workshops before I heard of AIDIDS, and then once I heard of AIDIDS, uh, it made a lot of sense to me and actually had found that I was, I was putting workshops together very much in this format without knowing um, anything about Mark. Malcolm Knowles or his research. But anyway, so uh, what AIDID stands for is activity, discussion, in-depth, deepening, and synthesis. So um, activity, basically um, you would begin a workshop session with an activity that is connected to the topic of the session. Um, this is meant to introduce the topic to the participants and get them grounded in their own context in, connected to, in connection to the topic. Now, <coughs> um, to keep, one thing to keep in mind, and particularly in terms of putting together a session for uh, the open exchange, um, this can be as simple as breaking people into pairs or groups of three to discuss their own experiences and, and contexts. Um, after they've done that, uh, then you know, bring the group together for a large group discussion and reflect on the last exercise. Um, what your role would be there is to really ask questions and guide that discussion. Um, after you've done that, then you can start introducing content. So input doesn't really come until you've been able to do that, uh, getting people grounded in what their problems might be or what their context are. You've had that larger group discussion which has synthesized what they have come up with. But um, uh, at this point, this is when, as a facilitator or somebody that is, is guiding or leading the discussion, you can bring in your own experience and external content to the workshop. So this is the point where um, uh, um, you, know, you can be bringing this stuff in. And usually what's really helpful is if it's based on the facilitator's own experiences. So you are then bringing in your own expertise and your own knowledge into the workshop. Um, after that, you do deepening. And in a technical training, this is usually the hands-on segment of a session. Um, but this is where the participants will, will put to use what they are learning um, to use. And then finally, um, uh, you want to do synthesis. So a really good training habit is always to summarize the session, talk about what happened in the session, um, some of the results of the discussion, what issues were discussed, what solutions were made, and give more time for participants to ask more questions before the session is closed. So again, AIDIDs, start off with an activity um, that is connected to the topic of the session. Um, uh, do discussion about that activity uh, where everyone uh, talks about what, what they thought of the activity they just completed. Then you can provide input. Um, so input uh, is where the trainer presents on issues, subtopics, and more, events, more advanced concepts related to the focus of the session. Then deepening. So then it, there, you, you want to provide participants an opportunity to, to put to use what they are learning to use. Um, and then finally, you do the synthesis and summarizing of the session. Um, a couple of things, uh, golden rules that I have for putting, um, to, putting together a, a workshop session. First of all, um, to, to uh, um, take John F. Kennedy's uh, framing of something, um, but um, think not what, um, what, uh, uh, it, what participants can learn from you. Think about what you want to learn from the individuals that are participating in your session. Your role as a facilitator, or the role of a facilitator, is always to enable peer sharing of knowledge. It is not to deliver a session or present a lot of content in any form. 
Um, always, always, always have a workshop session be productive. Make sure that it has a clear, a clear purpose. Now, if you are, are trying to think about what uh, you might want to do within your workshop, workshop session, these are any good things that would make it productive. So you can do the brainstorming of ideas. Um, you, can, uh, uh, talk, you can talk through a specific issue or challenge and try to achieve a shared of an understanding of what that looks like. Um, you can work through scenarios and capture insights and learnings. Um, identify action items and next steps in a particular context. So is there something that you want to take forward as a result of the workshop? Um, you can transfer, to, um, just simply transferring specific skills or know-how. Making a list of best practices, that's one of my favorites. Um, designing and, and reviewing a project or a campaign plan. Uh, capturing learnings from an action. And making a wish list of challenges in a specific concept. So all of these are things that, you know, if you we're articulating that as an output or an outcome for a session that would make it a really, really good session. But also within that, when we're talking about outcomes and outputs, and specifically when we get into trying to create sessions for the open exchange for social change, um, less is more. So uh, you do want to try to do a small number of things well in a session rather than cramming too many elements into, into what you want to work on. And also very important for anyone here that is going to do facilitation, please, we urge of you, don't do too much prep. Um, it's definitely not a good thing. You, what you just really need is a clear plan for how you want to spend the time and be ready to adapt as um, participants get engaged. Uh, and that's the bit too, like you really need to be flexible depending on what the participants are uh, wanting to do and learn. So just, just to review um, uh, your role or the golden rules, my golden rules, you are there to enable peer sharing of knowledge. Um, always make sure you have a clear outcome or even output in mind. Um, and definitely you want to have a flat plan, but you need to be flexible to the needs of the participants. So um, uh, a sample sh short session plan, um, and this is something that would definitely work within the time frame of what we will have during the open exchange for social change because we are looking at possibly uh, uh, 45 to 60 minute sessions. Um, so. Uh, the first three minutes, you really want to state your frame and the goals for the session that you want to have. Um, five minutes, do a go-around and invite each participant to say, and this is very ins important instruction to give, just one sentence of what they want to get out of the session. I don't know how many workshops I've been to where the go-around that starts off where everybody that gets uh, uh, asked to say why they came ends up being the entire session because everybody takes paragraphs rather than one sentence um, uh, to say. Um, then, you know, then is the point you break the participants up into pairs and get them to brainstorm best practices and questions that they have. Um, and they can put each item on a separate sticky note. Um, and then after that, you can spend 10 minutes collecting and grouping the best practices. And, and this is the point. You want your participants to, to do the grouping. This is not something you do yourselves, but you want to ask the participants to do the grouping. Always get them to do stuff. Don't do them for you. Um, but uh, but get, get those done into related clusters. Um, and then you can spend the remainder of the session uh, 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 looking for the hot spots and talking about them, right? So uh, that's the point where you can go into deeper dialogue and sharing about um, what is up there and what you know. Um, and you can also, if you want to do a little voting in order to have a better understanding of what people want to talk about, you can do that then as well. And then wrap it up with the summarizing and, and identifying any possible next steps. So um, I have done a hell of a lot of talking, which um, you know we all said at the beginning lecture is probably the worst thing you can do. Um, the problem with online um, sessions is the, it's really hard to be able to um, do uh, other stuff, but just um, um, curious if people would think about 
a session that they possibly would want to run at the Open Exchange for Social Change um, and what think about what your goal might be. Um, and if you wouldn't mind sharing that in the uh, um, chat room, um, we would really love to, to get a sense from you a little bit about what it is that you're thinking about doing for the Open Exchange and what you would like to do there. So um, please type in the chat room um, uh, any, anything that you would want to do in terms of a session um, and what your goal might be in doing that session. And I am merely pausing to let you think. So folks, I am going to move us along. Oh, that's great, Katie. Uh, group discussion engaging, making people think. Um, and I don't know this person's name, but um, uh, good, re good response here. I'd be interested in helping facilitate a session to help participants share concrete examples about real tangible impacts of, work, of open data. More and more governments around the world are publishing more information, but when has this directly led to tangible improvements in normal people's lives? And that would be a great session in terms of really getting people to think about uh, making that connection between the open data and, and how are we having impact, which is, of course, what we very much want to see a lot of at the Open Exchange for Social Change. Anything else to share? Keep keep and keep this this idea in mind. Um, and and liking what uh, Nanny has just put in um, with that Katie on this, and not just make people think, but create solutions that we can move forward after the session ends. Right. So really getting people's brain power to think about um, uh, solutions that can be done um, in moving forward in. Uh, and it, when they and when they get back to the real world, what are solutions that can be applied? What do they think is actually going to work for them um, in their own context? And that's great, Oscar. Thank you. Long-term sustainability for open data projects. Are there any good examples of this? And that's the thing too, like uh, use studies being able to share in a workshop session, um, use studies and getting people to um, um, be able to ask questions about uh, case studies, use studies, and all that. that that's great use of a, a workshop session. Great. Any other thoughts? Yes. And, and that is actually, thanks, Nanny. That is a capacity building for open data projects. That is a topic uh, well after my heart. And I always think the bit around capacity building um, is not so much the uh, 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 ability to get or the ability for people to use tools but the people to really understand and think about open data and how it can impact them and, and get them to move forward. But it would be great to have a brainstorming session or perhaps a best practices for capacity building for open data projects at the, um, the Open Exchange for Social Change as well. Okay, keep those in. We will, um, and, and very good, Mohammed, um, before I move us on, but yes, wanting to hear the stories from around the world and help to spread those voices. I think one of the things, too, is how do we amplify 
what we have learned um, from each other at the uh, um, at the open exchange how do we keep those stories or be able to use those stories in our work um, to help other people get an understanding of all the different contexts and ways that open data can actually have impact um, keep those coming in there we'll we'll review them um, if you guys uh, have any more coming in um, but uh, wanted to just review for you what the current plan is um, so you will know uh, a bit about how this is all going to um, fit into our format and our, our evil plans for um, making the open exchange for social change a real place where we are talking about actual impact on social change issues um, with open data. Um, so our plan right now is we're, we're going to spend the morning there getting to know each other and, and exploring topics for discussion. Um, so you know, the morning's really, the first bit is really going to get into uh, people being able to have discussion and dialogue with each other to understand motivations, um, why people are doing what it is that they're doing, um, what drives folks. Um, we will then uh, get into controversial statements about open data um, and get everyone to react to those. Um, and then we're going to do uh, uh, a little, a bit of a, a brain dump and get everybody to articulate at that moment what it is that they really want to get out of the day. Um, that's all going to happen on, on some post-it notes and we're going to have a fun exercise with grouping those post-it notes and getting people um, uh, to then think about what sessions, what you know, given what, what are on those post-it notes, what sessions could be done in the afternoon. Um, so after lunch, um, we will then come back and get those sessions organized, and that's where we will need all of you here um, to uh, to really step up, um, take take a session, and be willing to host it. Um, you know, all the things that I pointed out, we are not uh, wanting you to do prep, but we are just wanting you to have a good understanding of what would make a good workshop session, so you can pick up a topic that you think uh, would be relevant to you um, and run forward with it. I think one thing that we really want to make sure of for all of you that are doing facilitation, we want to really make sure that the session you are able to run is of benefit to you. We really do want to make sure that um, uh, you are able to tap in to the knowledge, the people that are, are showing up to, to your session and they can somehow help you out, get you over a hurdle, um, help you address a challenge, um, but more importantly, help you learn um, in how to move your work further. So with that, let's see, um, just uh, here's, here are the details again for where everything is. Uh, we will be starting up, as, as I mentioned, at 9.30 sharp, Tuesday, October 4th. Um, but I do want to just now pause um, and see if there are any specific questions that we can address. So if you have any specific questions, please feel free to type them into the chat box um, so that we can address them. And just to say, Oscar, have you, you haven't noticed anything that we should be addressing right now, have, we, have you? Uh, nothing that the participants have shared with us. Hopefully we'll get some really good questions right now. Great. So if you can good. just type them in, we'll uh, ask Dirk to try to answer them the best way he can. <laughs> Well, also to, just to say too, and that there's, um, I, I, I will, there are lots, there are 12 people here, so I am um, also wondering, both in terms of if you have questions, but um, for people that, um, uh, for people that um, have had experience with um, doing workshop sessions, if you've got any tips or anything that you want to share uh, for others on how you've overcome workshop challenges or best practices that you uh, um, uh, have learned, uh, please, please share them. Uh, this would be a great opportunity to get that knowledge out there. Um, yeah, and, and Nanny, um, one of the things that is really critical is that we do want to make sure that you do 
get notes taken. So if you do facilitate a session, please make sure that you assign a note taker um, and that we can then track that person down and make sure that we get the notes. But we definitely want to be uh, gathering the notes and making them accessible um, at that link that Moore has just shared with everybody, which is the forum for, um, for the Open Exchange. Any other, any other questions or comments? Anything to share in terms of um, best practices? I, and I do, you know, I am very apologetic about uh, making you guys type uh, stuff. Um, but uh, it is um, at least a good way for us to be communicating. So if there is anything you can share at all or a question. Oh, yes. I, Nada, that is one of my favorite things to do. Um, and I think that's one of the things that um, uh, people uh, often forget. When you are doing report backs, um, the long-winded report backs about what people learn that has a tendency just to be really tedious and hard for participants. But if you can get folks to just do a simple one sentence, this is what I got out of of the session that is a really, really healthy way of doing report backs um, on it. Um, and you know, as the, and, and I will say, uh, and Nanny, I, I, I will uh, refer your any do's and don'ts to the rest of the participants because I've done a lot of, of sharing. Um, Jag, you have a question here, let's see, about just a couple of timing questions for planning around, which may be covered by a schedule somewhere. What time do you expect the lunch break to be? That is a really good um, uh, question. I am expecting us to get to lunch by 1 o'clock, um, and we would then be starting the working sessions at 2 o'clock. Um, and I uh, uh, expect that we would have at least two slots of working sessions. So, you know, we do, uh, I think the, the magic here is that we are going to try to be getting uh, a lot of working sessions happening at once so that they can be smaller groups because uh, I know that we will have a much better exchange um, if those sessions are much, much smaller. Um, and, oh, that's a really good one, Mohammed. Uh, any special template or protocol for note-taking? Um, we will, uh, uh, I think, share a template out um, for folks, but just basically bullet points is what we need at the least uh, of what happened. We don't, uh, we wouldn't expect people to be doing concise, but we definitely would want any action items that are coming out of a session or if people have a group, we just want to make sure that those are, um, uh, are definitely um, documented. Nanny, that is also a great question. Do, do these sessions need any live tweeting? My response to that is no. I really believe that um, if, if, if you are uh, having the time to do tweeting during an event, that is probably not a captivating and productive event. Um, social media should be what is happening in the room not what is happening out online. Um, if there are specific, specific tidbits that happen that you want to share via social media, of course, and I would encourage that on break, um, one of the things that I, we would be encouraging also is, is um, not uh, having devices present at the, uh, at the event um, in terms of act, in the actual sessions. Um, I find that uh, with devices out, um, people tend to just quickly check an email or something like that and suddenly their attention is gone. So we want to do our, our best to make sure that people at the Open Exchange are actually fully present. That it, and that said, I know everybody has lots of really important things going on um, and uh, uh, may need to have the, have the device um, available to look at and all that. So it's not, it's not a requirement, it is a, um, it is a suggested use during the event. Um, all really, really great stuff and good to have that clarifications, these clarifications out. Um, anything else that uh, um, also give uh, Oscar and even more if she's not in a, a 
completely uh, noisy situation to uh, uh, come off mute and share anything that we might need to tell people about the open exchange. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. I think we can go with the, uh, actually my, my uh, what I would, wanted to say go, went a bit with what Mohammed was just asked, which is uh, we want to make the open exchange um, a live conversation. So these subjects are great to know, like get a feeling of what people are interested in, but when we're there we're going to have some time to um, gather all the, the um, inputs from people who will participate so that we can have um, a richer conversation. Uh, so don't worry too much about the agenda, like the, the, the contents. We might share some of the, the timelines and this important things like uh, lunch time, um, but we want it to be as alive as possible and like Dirk said before, we have it planned, but we will feel how the um, participants are doing, and we will play it by heart, sort of. Yeah, and my my golden my my rule in these kinds of events is uh, the uh, the the final agenda does not exist until the uh, the event has taken place. Um, so you know we very much want to be. Uh, responsive to uh, those that show up and um, be able to have an agenda that's going to meet their needs. Um, and I think the, the main thing though is, is understanding that schedule. That's the big thing you need to know and that is uh, you know we will start at 9.30, we will hit lunch at 1, we will come back at 2 and we will definitely be ending at 6 o'clock. Um, the other piece though um, is uh, um, uh, um, gosh, I just lost my train of thought. Um, the other piece is, is uh, um, uh, we do have some uh, uh, session topics that have come out. Though, so just to say that we have gotten uh, 40 registrants, 40, uh, actually close to 50 registrants with really great ideas on session topics um, submitted in their registrations. Just so you know, uh, I'm putting in the box here um, a link so that you can all see some of the session topics that we currently have um, uh, there. So please take a look. Um, I'm sure you, if anybody thinks, oh, I could, I, I'd really love to do that session, please come prepared to do it. But also, if you have anything along these lines that you would like to do yourselves, please bring that as well. Yes, um, and uh, um, um, also Moore's note that we do have to finish at 6 p.m. That will be a hard deadline. Um, there is a meetup with other pre-events that hap that's happening at 7.30, which is at the Media Lab, which is where we are, right? Which is why we have to do that. So with that, um, I will take us through to uh, the end. If you do, just to say, if you do have any other questions, please, please feel free to, to put them in. We will address them, but um, I just want to review um, what we've talked about. So um, always remember adult learning is problem-centered rather than content-oriented. So engaging people on problems and what they are currently dealing with is really, really good. Um, just throwing uh, PowerPoints and content at them is usually not so good. Um, AIDIDS uh, is a very effective workshop format, so activity, discussion, in-depth deepening, and synthesis. Um, but most importantly, it's not about what uh, the participants can learn from you, it's about what you can learn from the participants. Be pur purposeful and productive in your sessions. Less is more. And I don't mean more Rubenstein, I mean more. Less is more. Um, don't try to overdo or pack too much in because that will be unproductive. Please find a note take taker before you start your session and make sure that notes get taken. We will have clear instructions on what to do with that during the event. Um, and please remember the open exchange for social change starts at 9.30 a.m. in Madrid 
Tuesday, October 4th. Um, and with that, um, oh, uh, a, f a good question there, Nanny. How far is Afima and the Media Lab? Does anybody? It is pretty far, Katie says. So I think we're going to have to uh, provide folks with some mapping just to make sure that um, we we know how to get from Afima over to the Media Lab um, for the the wrap ups. That's very good I, and good uh, information exchange going on there. Um, 30 minutes plus with Metro is going to um, be hard. Yes. So, and just to, to say to folks, I think uh, a good thing for us to be providing you with is directions <laughs> on how to get from one place to the other. So anyways, I really, really just um, want to say both a big thank you to Oscar and Moore for um, all that they, they you, you guys don't have any idea what I've been putting them through um, the last couple of days is trying to make sure that everything was going to be ready for this. So thank you so much, Oscar and Moore, for all of your help. Um, I, it, I also just need to say thank you to all of you. We are really thankful that you have shown up, and we are really thankful that you want to contribute to the Open Exchange for Social Change. I hope today has provided you with good guidance and how to. Um, and uh, um, please feel free to contact any of us. Our uh, contact information is up there on the screen. And if you uh, have any specific questions, we can help you answer. Or if you also are, I know a session that I absolutely want to make sure um, gets done, please email me directly at Dirk at FabWriters.net. Um, also to say, if you are looking for more stuff on how to do uh, facilitation, I've got a bunch of stuff on my website up there at fabwriters.net. Um, look for the Fab Toolkit, and you will see lots of different information about uh, workshop and learning and all that stuff. So with that, um, I think I will stop recording and say thanks to everybody for this excellent uh, 50 minutes. Um, thank you so much. For, uh, for your attention.